It's sad, oh so sad. It's a sad, sad situation, and it's getting more and more absurd. So welcome back, friends, to the shop. I've got a really fun video series for you today. We're going to cover five of the worst tools of all time, the worst designs according to me. Now, I've got to preface this in the fact, and state the fact that I may not know how to use them properly, and I'm sure there's exceptions to all things. But when I look across my toolbox and I go to the one where I, the tools go to die and I see these things sitting in there, I'm like, why do I keep these things around? They're so horrible and I can't stand them. It's time for them to go. So here we go. Are you ready? Number one, the Yankee screwdriver. The Yankee screwdriver is such an enigma because everyone thinks of these things so fondly, myself included, but I don't know of anyone that actually has had a good experience using them. They came with interchangeable bits. We have a Phillips and a regular here, and you can see in the end that they have kind of a little, kind of a flat spot right there. And you would pull the chuck back and then it would find its little home there and that way it would prevent it from spinning. Okay, so let's say we wanna, we're doing some cabinet work and we're gonna, we wanna put a, a regular screw in because these are the screws that would have been around most likely when the Yankee screwdriver was invented, not Phillips, which makes them even more difficult to use. And I say, oh, people say, oh yeah, you need to drill a pilot hole. Okay, yeah, I get all that, but we'll change the directions here with the ratchet because it does go both ways. But even with a pilot hole, they're, they're still, they're terrible because you have a tool that is so long. I mean, this thing is, is you know, pushing, what, two and a half feet in, in length. It's a very unwieldy thing. And uh, to, to get your screw started, you have to uh, try to, I mean, it's really terrible. I mean, it's just almost not happening uh, if you don't pre-drill something. And let's say that you do pre-drill it, right? So I've got one that's pre-drilled here, bigger than it probably should be. Yes, it will work, but the chance of this thing misaligning and, and, and slipping off, and slipping off and going in and <coughs> mar marring your work, of course, it's, it, it's gonna work flawlessly, isn't it? First time ever. That's because I already ran it in that hole. But the point is, is that it's going to slip off here and it's going to mar your work because you're putting so much pressure. Now, I, can, I should be able to pull it out if I reverse the chuck. We can see that it will, you can turn it, it will come out. But the, the risk of that thing slipping off of there and there's not really doing a convincing job of showing you how terrible it is. Uh, the risk of it coming off of there, it's, it's just, just, you'll try one and you see, they're just, they're just terrible. Number two of the five terrible tools is an electronic stud finder. I don't care how much you spend, I don't care <laughs> how, who makes it, what model it is, I have had, I'll bet I've had a half a dozen of these things kicking around the toolbox. Of course, whenever you pick them up, the battery's dead, and then it's a nine volt, and no one has a nine volt battery around. And then you go along and it shows a stud where there's not a stud. I mean, they're just awful. If you don't know what a stud finder is for, is that when you're looking in your house where you, let's say you wanna put a nail in the wall and hang a picture or, or, or put a piece of, a, a, uh, whatever, shelving up, you need to know where the studs are at, right? They could be on 16 inch center, they could be on 24 inch center, and sometimes they're, they're not, depending on how, how poor the carpenter was. So this is marketed as a tool that you can sit on there, press the button and it sends a ultrasonic or some sort of a signal in there picking up the studs. There are even worse ones than these that, I, that are really a joke, the little magnetic ones. Have you seen those? I actually I ordered one off Amazon, I wanted to share it with you just to show you how terrible it was. And those things are completely useless. And the theory is, is you're supposed to go up and down with this silly little magnetic thing with a yellow arm on it, and it's gonna pick up a drywall screw. Well, it just, they just don't work. I and mean, in my experience, they just don't work. And I have used these things so many times, and for some reason, I can't get my head around the fact that they don't work, and they go back in the toolbox, and again, the dead nine volt battery, and I put it out there, I ended up throwing it back in the toolbox and getting a nail and, and find, trying to find the stud the old fashioned hard way. Electronic stud finders, in my opinion, in my experience, are terrible. The third terrible tool in my toolbox is not maybe not a tool per se, but it, I think it is, and it is these hateful, <laughs> Aluminum lamps, right? We all have these, these work lamps here. Look, it's already broken. It broke on the way out here. So uh, 
what these are, are they're just uh, kind of the, your traditional aluminum work lamp. And then you, they've got the built-in clamp, right? The clamp the clamps on the things and you, you clamp it on something and it falls off. And then it breaks the bulb because nobody buys rough service, rough duty service bulbs. You know what those are? Maybe some people don't know about that. I grew up, my granddad, so in, in the mechanic shop, uh, he always had a trouble light. A trouble light was a, a small light with a handle and a wire, kind of a wire cage on it and a hook on the end. And mechanics... You would you'd take it under there and you'd use the hook and you'd hang it on this. You could see what you're doing with work. Well, they get banged around and they get dropped and they get hit by wrenches and stuff. In a normal bulb, the filament is so thin that it will it, it just burns out. We've all dropped or bumped a light and it burns out immediately. Well, rough service service bulbs have a super thick filament and they're durable. You can drop them. They'll last a long, long time, but they're hard to find and they're very expensive incandescent bulbs. So no one buys them. I mean, I, I, I don't even know where I would get one today. Uh, so we ended up with, we end up with the cheap 99 cent bulbs on it. And of course we clamp this on something and the clamp falls off and the light goes out. And then it has this goofy little silly, ridiculous swivel thing here, this ball and socket mounting system here that the idea is you're able to tighten up this minuscule wing nut here uh, in a way that uh, it's going to hold this and it's not continuous, it's just continuous just to sag on you all day long. And then you can see right there is that the manufacturers have, have cheapened everything up to the point where the, the metal fails and it doesn't have enough thickness and strength to hold uh, the little knurled knob on there. And so this thing fails and it flops about. And then as we saw here, this is poorly made and it comes out and it's just a piece of junk. It's just absolutely a piece of junk like this camera that won't focus. Sorry about that. And I just can't stand these lights. They are a constant frustration and aggravation every time I use them. You know what I think happens is, is I think once upon a time that this was probably manufactured um, uh, with a bigger screw and, and, and with, with attention to detail and end user ability. Um, and then as time goes by, these things are just, they manufacturers, they just go cheaper and cheaper and cheaper to the point where the materials involved in them, they no longer function like they were originally designed. That could be, but this is a terrible, terrible tool. Number four on our list is a knife steel. <laughs> Tell me you don't have one of these around your house, right? The chef style knife steel, and you see the guys going back and forth like that and sharpening their knives. Do you actually know anyone that can have successfully sharpen a knife with one of these? I mean, I'm sure that there are some guys, maybe guys that are meat cutters that, that, that use them all the time and, and have muscle memory, but every time you order you know, some nice knives or a butcher block that's got you know, some hinkles or whatever they are, it always comes with one of these, right? And then your knife gets short and your wife you know, is on you because it, her knives won't cut tomatoes anymore. So like, okay, well, we'll all just, I'll just touch this up on the steel, right? Yeah, I don't think so. It doesn't, it doesn't work for the uninitiated. It actually does more harm than anything else. Every time I've tried to use one of these stupid knife steels, uh, my, my edge has been has suffered greatly from it. A funny story is, um, I think it was the guy that started Edge Pro, Edge Pro Apex that does the knife sharpener, the angle knife sh sharpener that Cutlery Lover and Nothing Fancy uses. Uh, I, th I think it was him that told me, uh, when he was getting started, he had a knife sharpening business. Uh, he would go around to restaurants and that, and, and the first thing that he would do is he would ask, do you have one of these things? Of course, every chef had one, you know, and then d d with limited, with p pretty terrible results. He would confiscate them. And his deal was, I will not sharpen your knives if these things are in the kitchen because you ruin everything with them. So I thought it was kind of a funny story. So number four, the, this, the knife sharpening steel is one of the worst, <laughs> worst things you could possibly have. Now let's finish up on a high note here. Number five is without a doubt, is it the Grizzly? The Grizzly Universal Socket. Behold the Grizzly Universal Socket. One socket to rule them all. One so oh, you don't need a whole socket set. You don't need metric. You don't need standard. You don't need any of that. You can just have this one, <laughs> this one socket that will do everything. If you look on the side even, it goes from quarter to three quarter and seven millimeters to 19 millimeters. So it is metric and standard. I, I remember I had a guy uh, that uh, he used to dirt bike with that, that he carried one of these in, the, in, um, in his truck and he said, I don't need a socket set. This is the only socket I'll ever need. I can do anything I want to with this one socket. I don't need them all rolling around, but it, it does not work very well. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the principle. So it's got these, um, it's, it's actually pretty clever. It's got these spring, these little spring rods in there. And the idea is, is that, it, they'll, that they'll mold themselves to go around everything. 
So here we have a half inch bolt, uh, which is well within its uh, design specifications, right? We'll put it on the uh, ye old snappy Tom ratchet here and see how our universal socket works here. So you can see that it goes, uh, it goes you have to put a little downward pressure on there, but it, it goes in there and those, those rods, right? They, uh, they, <laughs> it's, it's actually working. That's pretty tight too. Let's tighten it here and see if it'll, it'll tighten it here. Let's see, is it gonna stand up? How many times can we use it? Uh, actually, <laughs> usually, it, usually it doesn't work. Usually the, uh, the, one the last time I used one, all the things all came out. Let's try to get on the, on the other one right here. I, I, I'm afraid I might be, between this and the Yankee screwdriver, I might be eating some serious crow here in my, in my top five terrible tools because that's actually working pretty good, isn't it? And I'm putting, that's a long handled ratchet there. All right, it's gotta, it can't continue to work. Boy, the universal socket's making a fool out of me here. These are, that's a tight one there. Oh, that's not the, okay, well, you're not gonna, I mean, that's, that's a pretty big bolt there for the, for the universal socket. I'll tighten it back up here. Good grief. So I'm the first one to admit when I'm wrong. Actually, my only experience with these things is I used one years ago and the first time I used it, I remember I, I pulled on something, I lifted up and all the little, the little rods fell out on the ground. And I was thinking, boy, wouldn't that be nice if you were taking a carburetor off the top of your intake manifold and all these little rods dropped down into your engine and into your valve train. Uh, so that was prob it's probably not the best tool for mechanics. Uh, however, uh, would I recommend uh, all you guys with nice shiny sets of snap-on uh, sockets, you go and sell metric and standard and, and replace them with this? No, absolutely not, of course not. It's just a matter of time before it explodes and, and leaves little metal pieces all over your whatever you're working on. But in its defense, I'd have to say that if you had uh, limited space, let's say for a motorcycle, for example, or um, something you could throw in the glove box or in like an on a tool, a kit, toolkit that you keep in your car or vehicle or boat, man, that's pretty good. I mean, it really is a quarter inch to three quarter inch set that you could, you could actually tighten and get something loose. And if you had something, it also kind of struck me if you had something that was a, like a sort of a strange shape, like a wing nut, um, or maybe even a bolt that has rounded off a little bit, it might, it might work in some situations like that. But is it a replacement for a traditional socket set? Absolutely not. But it's not, it's not terrible. It's not as terrible as I was expecting it to be here. And so I don't say, I don't really know that we can count it as so. So I'm gonna give you a bonus. So I'm gonna break into next episodes here. We're gonna bring one out early uh, to replace the universal socket. And that is these stupid, stupid lopper clipper things here. I can't stand these things. Now I know there's gonna be some, is it topiary? Is it topiary that does the, the funny shapes uh, of, the, of the bushes? Uh, a topiary guy that says, oh yeah, these are the, these are the business. These are the, these are my bread and butter tool. But for me, they're just not, I can't stand them. Mrs. W always grabs these things for some reason when we go out and, and we're, we go out to work in the woods to do clearing. And, and she hammering away on stuff and trying to cut the woody material with them and they just don't work. And then she brings them into the shop. It's like, I need you to sharpen my, my clippers. And like, for some reason she's identified with these hateful things and she always insists on them. She keeps track of them even. And then I'm sharpening them and they're always in the woods and they're just, they're just terrible. They don't work at all. And I don't know why she, she is so, so doggedly um, adheres to them. Maybe, maybe she grew up where she grew up, they had a hedge. I don't think so. She was out cutting a hedge or arbivitas or something like that with them. But for, for my experience, I have never had a hedge. I'm never gonna have a hedge and I've never found a use for these things. They're just awful, awful. They, I, I can't stand them. So what I'm gonna do is since she doesn't watch the videos and she'll never see this, um, we'll just get rid of these and then uh, Mom's a word on that, I'll bet she's gonna have a hard time finding those and dragging them into the woods again. All right, so that's, <laughs> that's, that's my five. I have, I have five more here, some really good ones. Some of them uh, that you guys have recommended that it was fun reading through the comments. Uh, 
I ask you guys to put in the comments tools that, that are just really awful. And it, it brought things to mind and I was laughing reading through them. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, that's, I, I have those in my toolbox and they're awful. Uh, it's time to get rid of them. So put in the comments anything that you have that uh, you continue to, continue to clutter up your shop and that you continue to uh, use in the hopes that it's going to work, but it never works out and you know it, but you keep it anyway, maybe because you paid too much money for it <clears throat> and you're invested in it. Let me know in the comments. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and we might be able to add to that. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video. So welcome back to the homestead. I hope you guys all had a great weekend uh, over was it Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King Day. Jack and I took the day off and went up to uh, the mountain and had a wonderful time skiing. It was sunny and just a great, great time. So do you have tools that you despise that you keep hanging around? please put them in the comments. And if you enjoy these videos, don't forget to take a moment and click the thumbs up and uh, to leave a comment. It's a way you can show support. And Mrs. W and Jack and I, we really appreciate that. So lots of fun stuff coming up. You'll just have to wait and see. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys on the next video.